Hello everyone, my name is Sally Bayman and I'm Vice President of Marketing for Juniper's Cloud Service Provider Solutions. And joining me today is Brendan Gibbs. Brendan is Vice President of Juniper's Automated WAN Solutions and we're here to talk about some exciting things that are going on in the Metro. Brendan, thank you first of all for joining. Really appreciate your time as always. Hey Sally, thanks for having me here, appreciate it. You're welcome. So maybe if we can just uh, uh, talk a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing in the market that are driving this changing metro landscape. Um, first, obviously, we see a lot of video growth that's talked to, talked about a lot. Uh, more content distribution networks um, with video caching distributed into the metro networks. But what we're also seeing is new and emerging applications and workloads that reside closer to end users at the very edges of the network in edge clouds. And then, of course, we expect to see 5G driving more cell sites, more devices, more bandwidth, more traffic, even more low latency applications, uh, pushing actually the distribution of mobile 5G user planes and associated security gateways also into the metro. So all of these new and distributed applications are shifting service delivery from what used to be the provider edge into the metro. And that's driving more velocity, more volume, and more variety of traffic. So um, Brendan, with all of these uh, shifting uh, traffic patterns and uh, new applications and services getting distributed within the metro, what are the opportunities that that brings to uh, service providers and network operators? You know, Sally, I really think this is a tremendous transformational opportunity for service providers. Because if you think about the opportunity at hand, I really would categorize it as network conversions, first of all. Because in the past, what you had were networks and services that were built as tandem pairs, but in silos. You had a mobile network built for 3G and 4G. You generally had a separate network for consumer broadband, you know, residential home internet. And then you generally had a third network that was built for business VPN services. And each network was essentially overbuilt. Uh, they were siloed and they had different characteristics that drove that separation. Um, you had business services that generally had low latency, guaranteed bandwidth because it was contracted with SLAs. But then in contrast, you had the consumer internet uh, which was, uh, you know, um, uh, residential broadband to the home, generally higher bandwidth, but no guarantees at all. It was completely best effort. Um, and a lot of people would see their experiences degrade the more people would come on as neighbors at, at peak hours. And then you had 3G and 4G you know, mobility networks that were completely different with their own 3GPP based, you know, rigid characteristics that were, were built. So all of those different parameters drove separation. But today, there's an opportunity for service providers to fundamentally converge. Because when you start to think about 5G being introduced and you start thinking about the massive capacity, like gigabit speed 5G wireless service, suddenly everything opens up. Uh, you know, wireless, wireline can have comparable capacity. Uh, business and consumer services can start to merge because frankly, I'm. I'm talking to you over uh, Teams right now, sitting at home, the, the what, what constitutes a business has completely changed with COVID. Um, and it was already transforming to begin with. So the world of the future, the, the metro of the future is going to fundamentally be marked by network convergence. And for providers, that really represents a huge opportunity for efficiency and cost savings. My second point, though, that I would highlight is that you talked about distributed applications. Uh, a lot of what providers have been doing in the past was focused on network connectivity. Um, but with the distributed applications really hosted on edge compute, what we see now is an opportunity for providers to transform themselves as well into not just connectivity providers, but full solution providers and, and, and to really re realize the service in the service provider concept. Service not being just connectivity, but higher layer applications as well, leveraging that beachfront property, super valuable close to the end user. And ultimately what I think a lot of providers are trying to do is to deliver the best service, the best experience with highest customer satisfaction to their end users. So the opportunity is for them to transform from connectivity to service delivery to fundamentally experience first networking. Yeah, and uh, Brendan, I'm so glad you mentioned experience first networking. You know, Juniper, as you know, is on a mission to deliver experience first networking, both in terms of 
you know, the network operator experience, but also more importantly, the network user experience. And we all understand the importance of, particularly as you mentioned um, in, in this past year. Um, so tell us what are the challenges of the current Metro architecture, particularly in the face of this shift in service delivery? And why is there a need for a new approach? And maybe if you could tell us a little bit about the elements of that new approach. Yeah, you know, I think if you start with the idea of network convergence, the platforms and the architecture that are employed today really aren't suitable at all. Um, and so what you need is a completely new approach. First of all, from a platform point of view, they just don't have the capacity to support today's solution requirements. One and even two gigabit to the home, plus low latency, plus the new timing protocols that are required for mobility, plus the ability to do service steering end to end within the, within the architecture. So the platforms themselves need a, a, a redo uh, to really accommodate uh, more capacity uh, for transport. But it's not just the platform level, it's also architectural level because a lot of the metros in the past were built for very simplistic traffic comes in, traffic goes out type of east-west connectivity across a network uh, diagram graph, so to speak. Um, but with distributed edge compute and all these distributed applications and services, you need to essentially have traffic hairpinning. You need to have traffic go up, you know, north-south to distributed edge compute as well as east-west. Basically means you need to have flexible service steering and ability to have any service on any port, depending on what kind of application a customer might want to deliver on a given port. So that type of flexibility and service steering requirement drives a whole need for an architectural refresh. So I, I think that the, the, the new metro of the future requires new capacity and new architectures, it requires an unprecedented level of service intelligence and service steering that previously was, was hosted in edge networks. Now the, the metro is the new edge fundamentally. So platforms that have been deployed for the past need a refresh and providers have that opportunity uh, even as they're upgrading their capacity to unlock that convergence, but to do it in a very smart fashion that's really capable for the new metro of the future. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Brendan. And so, you know, we're here today talking because we're launching uh, Juniper's new cloud metro vision strategy and solutions. Um, maybe can you tell us a little bit about uh, the new solutions for cloud metro and specifically how they're helping network operators to differentiate themselves, particularly in this experience first um, era? Yeah, it's a great question. So the reason we're calling it, by the way, a cloud metro is because we, we've taken a step back given this massive new set of requirements and the, the need to completely revolutionize how a metro is built. And we've looked at some examples that have already been done uh, for massive scalability, massive automation, lights out control. And here we looked to some of the biggest hyperscale web networks in the world. And we've taken lessons from that, we, but we've applied it with a uniquely service provider flavor to the metro access and aggregation realm. And that's why we're calling it a cloud metro. So Juniper is offering a, a full comprehensive cloud metro solution for this, where we have a scalable IP fabric with best in class, new high capacity infrastructure platforms marked, for example, by our new ACX 7000 metro aggregation system. That's a perfect complement to our ACX 700. Uh, metro access platform. So we've completely refreshed our own metro access and aggregation infrastructure to, to unlock the capability for network convergence of that new cloud metro. But also keeping in mind the need to have intelligent traffic steering, we've embedded an unprecedented level of intelligence into our own platform. We have the ability to offer end-to-end -end traffic steering with best-in-class new architectural protocols such as segment routing or, or SRV6, EVPN, uh, you know, Flex Algo and other sort of protocols that are required to unlock that type of any to any service any, uh, on any port, plus the, the traffic uh, steering capabilities as well. But arguably most important is the automation of the operational life cycle of that infrastructure. Building high capacity, building an intelligent traffic steering architecture is critical but really being able to exploit that for rapid service introduction and most importantly, rapid and high quality service assurance of experiences is paramount. And that's why we've announced previously our Paragon automation suite to really help pair 
the best in class cloud metro platforms with that Paragon automation platform focused on service assurance. And this is, you know, to your point, where service providers can now start to differentiate their own offerings by focus on measuring, monitoring, and assuring the quality of their own experiences to drive their own customer SAT scores up and ultimately differentiate themselves in the market with the highest capacity, best experience of Metro delivered services. That's terrific. Thank, thanks, Brendan. So, you know, new 5G, IoT, and edge services certainly bring incredible opportunities for service providers, challenges as well. What we heard from you, Brendan, just now is that, you know, network operators won't be able to meet the needs of the new Metro by relying on the architecture designed for yesterday's static transport and aggregation needs. And what they really need is um, a versatile and agile cloud metro uh, built for experience first networking. Um, so, Brendan, why Juniper? Why is Juniper best positioned uh, to be a trusted partner for network operators to, uh, to transform their metro architectures? First of all, we've done it. Juniper has years and years of experience in building the most highly complex, highly scalable networks in the world. Anyone watching this video right now is most likely watching it over a Juniper network. We have our routing solutions deployed in all of the largest hyperscale networks. We have routing solutions deployed in almost all of the biggest service provider networks and the biggest enterprise networks as well. So we've been there, we've done that, so to speak. Our Junus operating system really is a linchpin of the capacity and scale of the internet today. So what we're doing is we're taking that best in class expertise of how to build the most scalable networks and we're pairing it with the, the best infrastructure platforms, the most modern refresh of infrastructure for the Metro access and aggregation, as I've said. And again, we're pairing that, you know, the ACX Metro platforms with our Paragon automation suite. So why Juniper? We've done it. We, we know how to build the most scalable, innovative networks in the world. We have just in time, the, the most refreshed portfolio of infrastructure and automation to, to, to pair with that as well, to unlock the capabilities and promise of that new cloud metro. And a third aspect, frankly, is uh, we are gonna be the best provider, our best partner for, for service providers because we don't have a horse in the race of radios or packet cores. We can help providers transition to a next generation framework of open RAN architectures to unlock the value and efficiency and in, in innovation of open networking architectures. We don't have to have an ulterior motive of, you know, buy our networking uh, infrastructure products because we really want you to, to, you know, have it linked and locked into a radio or a packet core. Um, we can be the Switzerland, so to speak, of, of networking to help service providers unlock, as I've said, the benefits of that open networking where we have the best in class of, of routing products. Uh, that, that are interoperable and open with any vendor's product, any radio, any packet core, and any sort of uh, networking infrastructure with that end-to-end -end automation and slicing capabilities that service providers need for that open RAN architecture. Yeah, it makes total sense. So, you know, to bring all this back, you know, new 5G and edge capabilities offer network operators essentially a once-in-generation opportunity to really redefine their role in the, the digital um, services ecosystem. Uh, Juniper, Juniper can certainly help build a future focused service aware metro network to take advantage of all these new services. You know, Brendan, let me thank you. First of all, terrific discussion as usual. Thank you for your time and your insights and taking us through Juniper's new cloud metro vision strategy and, and new solutions that we're bringing to market. And I'd like to thank everyone who's listening in today. If you need more information about Juniper's cloud metro portfolio and solutions, please visit www.juniper.net. Uh, you'll find a Cloud Metro Solutions page. And again, thank you very much, Brendan, and thank you for everyone who uh, listened in today. Thanks, Ali. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.